Hey there, Andy Robertson here with GreenbeltAcademy.com and I'm super excited in today's video to teach you all about SWOT analysis. Now the reason I wanted to cover SWOT analysis is if you're preparing for the Greenbelt exam, you've probably seen that the body of knowledge is being updated and one of the 14 new tools that are being added is something called SWOT analysis. So I wanted to teach you SWOT analysis today along with kind of the big picture four step process for organizational change because SWOT analysis is one piece of that big picture process. So I wanna cover all that today. By the way, if that is you and you're preparing for the Greenbelt exam, stick around to the end of this video. I'm gonna share with you a special resource, a free online course that includes videos and practice exams and downloadable content to help you learn those 14 new concepts and ideas and tools that have just been added to the body of knowledge to help you be successful on exam day. All right, let's head over to the computer and check out that four step process. All right, let's take a look at today's agenda. So I want to start by just introducing this idea. I know we're talking about SWOT analysis, but I want to make sure you understand the big picture of how SWOT analysis fits into the organizational improvement process. And so that's what I want to cover today is not just SWOT, but the four-step process for organizational improvements. Now, let me start by briefly showing you what a big picture looks like of the four-step process. So every organizational improvement starts with some sort of vision, and we're going to go in depth into this, but every organization needs to have a vision or a goal it's attempting to accomplish. Now, once you have a vision, you can go through SWOT analysis, and this is commonly described as strategic planning, right? You want to take your vision, and you want to create a strategic plan to help you create that vision. Now, the back half or the second step in strategic planning is all about setting priorities. SWOT analysis is a lot like a brainstorming activity where you're going to generate a ton of ideas and initiatives and opportunities for improvement. And what you need to do when you're done with, with a SWOT analysis is prioritize and focus on your most important task. And so that's step three in the big picture process. And step four is all about making things happen. Having a vision and having a strategic plan is great, but you have to put that into action and make it a reality for you to actually ever achieve your vision. So let's go through these four steps in detail. Step number one is all about creating a vision. I love this quote from the book of Proverbs, where there is no vision, the people perish. That quote is, is identical for businesses. Every business needs a vision and a reason for existing and a vision for where you want to go in the future. Now, when you're creating a vision, you should think about two things. First of all, the current state of your business. Where are you today? And where do you want to go in the future? What, what do you want to accomplish? What do you want to achieve? And when you're creating this vision, think about the different attributes of great organizations. Do you want to be known for quality or innovation or customer service or brand reputation or delivering value? Pick an attribute that you really care about as a leader and as an organization and build your vision around that attribute. Now, when you're coming up with a future state for your organization, do a little bit of benchmarking. Go out and look at other great companies, whether they're in your industry or not in your industry, that do really well at what you want to do. Maybe it's quality like Toyota. Maybe it's innovation like Apple or Tesla or brand reputation like Nike and Disney or the way Amazon delivers value, no matter what it is. Benchmark off of those industry experts when you're creating that vision for your organization. Now, once you have a vision, you can start doing a bit of SWOT analysis. And this is where we get into strategic planning as an organization. Now, before I walk you through the four aspects of SWOT analysis, I want to make sure you understand what it is fundamentally. It is a brainstorming session. And what's most important is making sure you've got the right people in the room. You want to have thought leaders and subject matter experts and stakeholders and key leaders in your business to make sure that your SWOT analysis is thorough and comprehensive and accurate and it's actually going to help you achieve the vision that you have for your organization. Now once you have the right people in the room, it's time to go through the SWOT process. So the first thing that you want to consider when you're you know, putting together a strategic plan is what are the strengths of your business? Because what you should be doing fundamentally is you should be leveraging your core strengths to achieve your vision. What are the skills right, that, that your organization has? What are the uniquenesses of your product or, or advantages you have in the marketplace that you can leverage to achieve your goals? I think you should be clear about those things. You should write them down and they should become part of your strategic plan because those are clearly things you do well and things that you should continue doing in the future. 
Now, the flip side of strengths is obviously weaknesses. What are the limitations or the problems that your organization has that's holding you back from achieving your goal? By the way, as, as continuous improvement professionals or, or quality engineers, whatever, what we do best is solve problems. This is where we use tools like DMAIC or Plan, Do, Check, Act or the CAPA process to address problems in the organization so that we improve on these weaknesses and move our organization towards a vision. So it's really important to consider the weaknesses in your organization. They could be cultural. They could be processes. They could be systems you use. It could be leadership problems. Think about all of the different aspects of your business that are holding you back and try to address those using a strategic plan. Now, the third thing to consider are opportunities in the marketplace. How is the marketplace changing or how is your customer changing and how can you leverage that change over the next two, three, five, ten 10 years to achieve your vision? It's really important to think about what improvements can we make to leverage these opportunities and again, how is the consumer needs changing and how can we take advantage of that in our strategic plan? And the last thing that you should consider when you're thinking about your strategic plan is threats. What are those internal threats or even external threats that are going to derail your organization in terms of achieving your vision? This could be competitors out there who are creating some new product. This could be obstacles like, like new regulations or trends in the marketplace or trends in customer behavior. What are some threats that might impact your business? And you want to make sure that your strategic plan addresses those threats to minimize the risk associated with those those particular threats. Now, the output of your SWOT analysis should be a laundry list of improvement opportunities, quality initiatives, projects, and ideas to help you achieve your vision. Remember, this whole idea of creating a strategic plan is to help your organization achieve its vision. And so that's what we're coming up with in the SWOT analysis. Now, oftentimes, when you take a look at this list, it's going to be really long. And so step number three in this entire process is all about setting priorities. And when it comes time to setting priorities, I like to think about all potential opportunities according to two attributes, impact and effort. You know, when we, if we're going to invest effort into a project or an initiative, we want to get the best return on that investment. And so if you take a, a laundry list of projects, you can prioritize them or you can determine your priorities based on their impact and their effort. Now, when you're thinking about the impact of a particular project, think about the vision you're trying to achieve. Is it higher quality? Is it better innovation? Is it improved customer service or your ability to deliver value or your brand reputation? Make sure you're quantifying the impact of every project or initiative based on, on the vision that you're trying to achieve. And then when you think about the effort associated with the project, think about the time and money and resources and people that are going to be required to make that project happen. And if you consider these two attributes, we can, we can take our impact effort analysis and we can think of it as four different quadrants. Now, you can, you can make this more quantitative. You can give this a numerical score. But the way I like to teach it is just a really simple high-low analysis. Now, the first quadrant here in the top left is high impact, low effort. And I like to call this the easy win category. These are projects that are going to have a big impact on the organization and they're not going to require as much effort. These are obviously going to be our top priority because they have the best return on that investment or that effort. Now, the next category down here in the bottom left is what I would call incremental wins. It's not going to take a lot of effort, right? It's low effort, but it's also low, low impact. We're, it's not going to be a slam dunk. It's not going to be a home run, but it's going to move the business forward in, in a small, meaningful way. And these are called incremental wins. Now, the, the third quadrant down here in the bottom right is what I would call the don't do it quadrant. If you have a project or an initiative that's going to require a lot of effort but not have a big impact, you shouldn't be doing that project because essentially you're not getting the return on investment that you should be looking for. So essentially this is the don't do it quadrant. And then in the top right, I like to call this big bets. This is high effort, but it's high impact. And so these are the projects that are really going to move your organization forward in a big way but they're also going to require a lot of effort. And that's why I call them big bets because potentially, right, if they don't pay off, you've invested a lot of resources into that project. Now, once you understand this quadrant, you can take all of those different ideas and initiatives and projects and improvement opportunities that you came up with, right? Let's say we created A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Let's say we created, I don't know, 10 or 13 different initiatives here. 
we can sit down as a team and we can rank all of these projects and initiatives based on their impact to the organization and the amount of effort that it's going to require. And if, again, if you just do this as a team, you can sit down and, and talk through all these different details and you can take this list and quickly identify your priorities. Remember, this is all about setting priorities. And once you do this, it's going to become obvious. So for example, idea B, Project F, Opportunity J, these are all top priorities, right? These are the things that we need to focus on immediately. Let's put in the effort, let's reap the rewards, and then let's move on to the second priority, which might be something like Improvement D, maybe we pick H and Project K, maybe the green ones here are our top priority, and then the blue ones here are our second priority. Now what we've done is we've taken our vision, we've translated it into a strategic plan, and we have our priorities. But essentially, we, we haven't actually done anything yet, and now we're on to step four of this whole idea of organizational improvement, and that's making things happen. So I'd love to share this quote from Joel Barker who said, vision without action is merely a dream. If you start with a vision and a strategic plan, but you never take action on that vision, you simply have a dream that's never gonna come to fruition. If you take action, without having a vision, you're not gonna ever achieve a big goal because you don't have a vision that you're working towards. But if you can combine vision with action, you can change the world. And so I, I think this is, this is really important. You have to have a vision and a strategic plan, but you also have to put it into action. And this is where we as continuous improvement professionals and quality engineers really make our money because we are the ones who really turn a vision into action. Now, let me tell you what this looks like before I show you the three different tools that make things happen. I love this quote. Leadership is the capacity to translate vision into reality. I can't understate the value that I think good leaders have on an organization to help translate that vision into reality. Now, beyond good leadership, though, organizations need a process for making things happen. And step number one or tool number one is project management. This is a fundamental aspect of the continuous improvement cycle. In fact, if you're preparing for the green belt exam or the black belt exam or even the CQ exam, concepts in project management are included in those bodies of knowledge for a reason. And that's because implementing projects or managing projects are a huge aspect of making change happen in an organization. So project management is huge. The second tool that is commonly used throughout every organization to make change happen is this idea of Hoshin Conry. Essentially, we have a vision for the organization and we wanna cascade that vision and goals and objectives throughout the organization so that everybody in the organization is working towards a common vision. We all need to be rowing in the same direction and that's where Hoshin Conry makes sure that everybody is working towards the same goals and the same objectives. And then the last thing that every organization needs is metrics. If you've got a goal and a vision that you're trying to achieve and you think it's going to take you a year or two years or five years or 10 years, you need a way to track and measure your progress along that journey. And that's exactly what metrics and drivers are. They're essentially a reflection of your progress towards the vision. And so, for example, let's say you have a goal to become the highest quality company out there. You would want to create metrics around quality. Is it customer complaints? Is it yield? Is it cost of poor quality? You come up with a metric and then you track your progress, right? And, and if you're doing the right things and if your projects are having an impact, those metrics should be improving over time as you achieve that vision and as you move towards your vision. All right, that is it for today. Remember, the four-step process for organizational change is having a vision, creating a strategic plan, aligning on priorities, and then making things happen. By the way, the, the reason I created this video is because if you're preparing for something like the ASQ Greenbelt Certification Exam, SWOT analysis is one of the new tools that was recently added to the body of knowledge. So I wanted to put this video out there for people who are preparing for the Greenbelt Exam who maybe don't have a good resource for SWOT analysis. I also want to share this resource with you. I created a completely free course that I'm calling the 14 new tools for the Greenbelt Exam where I want to give you training material in the form of video lectures and practice exams and downloadable PDFs completely for free on the new tools that are being added to the body of knowledge, SWOT analysis, spaghetti diagram, Kano model, design VNV, business continuity planning, all of these new concepts are being added to the Greenbelt body of knowledge. I wanted to help you by giving you this free resource. Just head over to greenbeltacademy.com slash new tools. You can sign up completely for free, get, get access to this course. Remember, you get the videos, the practice exams, the downloadable PDFs. By the way, 
Also check out greenbeltacademy.com. I've got a ton of practice exams and study guides and exam day resources that you can get completely for free, again, to help you on your journey to become a Greenbelt. Anyways, I hope you really enjoyed this. If you did, hit that like button so other people just like you can find the same content. And if you're on the journey to become a green belt, hit that subscribe button. That way, as I publish new content every single week, you get notified and you stay on that journey and you continue growing and learning and pass the green belt exam. All right, that's it for me. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much. Bye.